What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Money Gang Crypto. One of the lies I've heard by influencers, by people, is Hex on Pulse Chain is exactly the same as Hex on ETH. You've probably heard the narrative of the following. When Hex got forked onto Pulse Chain, it was a stock split. And it's an interesting narrative because we've accepted it as a narrative. That is number one. That was the number one biggest issue. Hex on Pulse Chain and Hex on Ethereum are two very separate cryptocurrencies. Now you'll say to me, no, 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 but hold on. Money Gang Crypto, Stefan. Hex went to 56 cents and then it dropped all the way down. Correct on Ethereum. So in this video, I'm going to establish the differences between the two and how Hex may actually do a new all time high. Well, depends on which chain you're talking about. Now, I don't want to come into this and be Team E Hex versus Team P Hex like Furu Finance and Johnny Chaos. Come down with me. Come down. What's wrong? What's wrong, old, pick you up. old man? Fuck you, man. Old man? But I need to make some distinct differences, and I'm going to repeat this again. Pulse Chain Hex is a completely different cryptocurrency than Ethereum Hex. Now, the realization really came or solidified. There was a recent hack that occurred on an exchange, and on that exchange, some Hex was withdrawn, taken, put on one inch, which is an aggregator, and swap for Ethereum. And at that point, around about $80,000 was cashed out. And of course, it affected the overall day's performance for eHex. But the guy didn't know about Pulse Chain Hex. He didn't go and he didn't switch networks with RPC settings on MetaMask. He didn't then exchange it for Pulse, which is the highest liquidity pair. He didn't then bridge it across or sell it into that pulse into, say, for example, a die stable coin and then bridge it across. No, he was quickly getting in and out of the system. And the dynamics of things for Ethereum Hex and Pulse Chain version of Hex have changed. Now, the main issue with how we've been talking about Pulse Chain Hex is that we've been talking about it like a stock split. Let's explain a stock split for a second, all right? In a stock split, let's say you owned a stock at $100 and they decide that they want to make a stock split, what they do is they take the value of a company and say they double the shares that are available. Your $100 stock now gets reduced down into two $50 stocks. So you receive more stocks, but you receive them in the form of less value per stock. Now, for a lot of people, we use the analogy of a stock split for cryptocurrency and in particular for the fork of Pulse Chain because in a sense, it made that pattern, like a lot of the price for Hex Ethereum and Pulse Chain Ethereum always split in half, right? The minute that the fork happened, the price of things changed and lots of people dumped off and there was a lot of activity. However, the moment that the fork happened, you had two different entities, two different cryptocurrencies. One was heavily backed by Ethereum and USDC stablecoin, and another placed most of its value in Pulse, PLS, and eHex. We as human beings, we like to simplify things. We like to say, well, because it's tied to the liquidity of eHex, therefore it's completely bonded, and it's all going to go up together, and it's all going to go down together at the same time. And actually what we do see, the reality of it, is that there are differing prices on each side. And it can depend on the conditions, the economic conditions, of each side. See, there are two very different conditions for being able to use one side versus the other side. With Ethereum-based Hex, it is much easier to get your money on and off the exchange. It's much easier to be able to purchase it up. It's much easier to buy Ethereum straight away, currently, than Pulse. As you can see on the chart, this is Hex to ETH. It said about 52 cents, give or take, from Dex Screener. It went down from the 52 cent mark all the way down, 99.46%. We will agree that that is the chart. So it's all time high, and it hasn't shown all of the data from 2019 going up, went up to this 
beautiful green line here and did 10,000 X. So what did Hex do on Pulse? Hmm. It went up to 4 cents. And then it dropped down to 2054. And then it stayed around 0 0.01. It's done a drop from the top to the bottom of about 87%. And since that point, it has gone from the bottom to where it is currently doing 164%. And I know what some of you guys are going to say. Hex was 56 cents and then it dropped all the way down. Newsflash, Pulse Chain Hex never existed. Never has, never was. It never did an all-time high of 56 cents. If we look at the market cap, the market cap is completely different on Hex Ethereum versus Hex on Pulse Chain. Almost double for the Pulse Chain version. And then we look at the liquidity, 755k on the eHex side, 26 million on the Pulse Chain side. The dynamics and the conditions are completely different in terms of liquidity. We also see price changes. EHEX up 1.89%, PHEX down 1.4%, and the volume, $1 million worth of volume, only 600 ks worth of volume. During the stock split, the allocation of the stocks stay exactly the same in terms of percentage amounts. During the blockchain fork, things changed dramatically. Actually, a lot of things changed. Let's take eHex, for example. The God Whale sacrificed a bunch of eHex and gave it away to BankEx. And BankEx became a major player, major whale, within the eHex ecosystem. But in the Pulse Chain side of things, they, their token allocation percentage wasn't the same as what they've got on eHex. And it's very interesting to see this dynamic because there were people in and out of the community, some guys who were like Furu, who wanted more of the PHEX. And so their token allocation, their percentage of what they owned in PHEX went higher and higher as they bought more of it up. And people saw a premium discount on the EHEX side of things, the Johnny Chaoses of the world and people like that, and thought it's too good of a deal not to go buy it on that side. So what you started to see is that the token allocation percentages changed and varied, not like a stock split. Before Pulse Chain existed, a lot of people decided to stake their hex in order to earn inflation and earn tokens way into the future. And part of the reason they did that is because they saw the value of long-term investing and holding onto an asset that is known to price appreciate and then being paid by the inflation for delayed gratification. Now, one of the major issues that Ethereum is having and will have in the next bull run is the following. Gas fees are going to be ridiculously expensive. And they're even more expensive when you end a stake. Actually, some of the smaller stakes will not be worth the gas fees that you'd have to pay in order to unstake them. It won't be till about 2027 when Ethereum will be able to shard the network, making it more effective, cheaper on gas fees. However, Come this bull run, I believe that many people will not be able to unstake their small stakes because the gas fees will be way too expensive and it won't be cost efficient. It's kind of like someone losing their Bitcoin. If someone lost their Bitcoin because they left it on a hard drive somewhere, that's out of existence. The circulation of HEX will reduce in the same way that the Bitcoin circulation. There's many missing tokens around the world. There's many people around the world that have missing Bitcoin. In the same way, I think that there are going to be people unable to end their stakes on Ethereum side because they cannot afford the gas fees or because it's not economically efficient to do so. It would cost more in gas than the actual stake itself. In the stock split example, shareholders own more shares, but the value of each share is proportionally reduced. In a cryptocurrency fork like that of Pulse Chain, Hex is two separate cryptocurrencies on two different chains. Different dynamics, gas fees are different, speed of transactions different. The staking is the same prior to the fork because those stakes get copied across. But whatever happens to the stakes in the future is really up to each chain. The users of each chain get to dictate 
how staking works, how long they want to stake it for, and what the average length of stake will be. As we can see on hexfire.io, we can see that the liquidity for Ethereum based hex is predominantly within the ETH and USDC pairing. If we switch to the Pulse Chain side of things, well, the predominant amount of liquidity that's available is 177 billion Pulse. The other liquidity pairing is eHex. So the liquidity between the two of them are different. The best example that we have in the market is Ethereum Classic and Ethereum. So for those of you that don't know, in 2016, Ethereum had to do a hard fork on the chain from the original Ethereum Classic to what we know as Ethereum today. There was a DAO attack that occurred and they had to do a hard fork. A huge amount of Ethereum was stolen and the fork reversed the hack transactions. They returned stolen funds to the users. There was a portion of people who disagreed with forking Ethereum. They believe that code is law and they stayed on Ethereum classic side. In July 2016, the hard fork occurred and you then had Ethereum classic and Ethereum. As you can see from Ethereum's website, the ETH price at the time was $12.54 and they had a vote on it. So anyone who had DAO tokens from the hack, they basically moved the funds from the stolen Ethereum address into a new contract with a single function, withdraw. And anyone who lost funds could withdraw one ETH for every 100 DAO tokens in their wallets. This was a voted community action and many of the miners refused the fork because the DAO incident wasn't a defect in their protocol. They went on to form Ethereum Classic and stay true to the code. Ethereum Classic post launch of the fork was 75 cents in the July region. And it did go on to make all time highs, right? It went on to do a $40 high. It then later on in 2021 went on to do $136.38 in the 2021 bull run. Of course, it wasn't as effective as Ethereum. If you look back on Ethereum, it had gone up to $20 prior to the fork. And then it also went on to do an all time high, as many people know, at 4.8K, $4,878. ETH and ETH Classic are a good example of what happens when you take one currency and split it into two and you have two separate blockchains and two separate cryptocurrencies. In the same way, HEX now has two different contracts. It has two different types of liquidity pools. And what will happen in the future to those two prices is going to be very interesting. If there's more liquidity bonded between EHEX and PHEX, then it's likely that the price will go up or move relatively similarly up and down together. However, I've seen in the example, ETH Classic went on to do gains, but it didn't do as well as Ethereum. And Ethereum went on to do extremely well for those people who were invested in both. They would have done well in both of those markets if they sold in the 2021 bull run. The majority of liquidity for HEX on Ethereum is in Ether now. Actually, it had been changed by Richard Hart to be USDC leading up to the hard fork. Now, the biggest liquidity pool is Ethereum. And on Pulse Chain side of things, Hex on Pulse Chain, the biggest liquidity pool is with Pulse. You have to ask yourself when you talk about the two products, the two cryptocurrencies, if we take liquidity bonding seriously, does Pulse Chain outperform ETH in the next bull run? If most of the liquidity is bonded to those two coins, then the performance of those two coins will reflect also on the relative value of hex on each chain. So if Pulse does more X's than Ethereum, it may have a higher economic effect on the price appreciation of each hex. And so that's where you start to ask yourself which one can do more X's than the other. Now, before you think this is going to be a rant about how Pulse Chain Hex is way better than Ethereum Hex, let me just put some dynamics to you. Let me push some things back to you. Yes, Pulse Chain Hex hasn't done a 10,000x. The copy has done 10,000x. However, the ease of access to be able to purchase up Pulse Chain Hex is very hard. 
it's much harder than Ethereum Hex. And the price of Ethereum Hex is ridiculously low. And then you have to take into account ratios. There are going to be players in the system that want to ratio trade each side. They want to earn more Pulse Chain Hex, then they want to earn more E Hex, and they're going to play the game. Some people are going to value the e-hex side of things. Some people are going to value the pulse chain hex side of things. And how does the sharding of the network in 2027, around that period of time, affect the value price of Ethereum hex in the future? It's a real interesting question. A lot of the liquidity that was previously on e-hex has been withdrawn. There's less liquidity now than before. And how does that affect price? Well, it can affect it to the downside in a bear market, as we've seen major, major moves to the downside after Pulse Chain launch. But it also can have major, major upside potential because when there's less liquidity, when there's less liquidity, there's much more slippage eaten up with purchases of hex. And when green candles happen, we start to see movement of price upwards because people suddenly want to buy. They've been on the sidelines and they suddenly get FOMO. Their emotions take over and they want to purchase. So it's easier to buy on the Ethereum side. However, the Pulse chain side, most of its liquidity is tied to Pulse. I personally think that Pulse is going to do a few more Xs this bull run than ETH. They are also bonded highly together. When they're bonded together, Price appreciation on one side and price appreciation on the other side help each other synergistically. It's a great product. And is there a value proposition to having HEX? Yes, there is, because you earn the inflation. You stake it and you'll get the earned inflation. During this bear market, prior to the fork, and this is an important point, I decided to lower my average entry cost. I had bought HEX at 22 cents. I'd bought HEX at 33 cents near the top. And it was absolutely terrible for my bags. But instead of sulking and crying about it, I average entry down way below the one cent mark. And then I got my two copies. I had one on one side, one on another side. And that doesn't include the yield that I'm earning from staking. In my opinion, I think the average price where it's been hanging around at will be different next bear market. I think it will be higher than what it is currently. I actually think it'll be higher than the last bear market low. So if I take my average entry price and I look at the lowest point as of this last bear market in 2022, 2023, and if I'm higher than that, I have a higher chance going into the next bear market that the price of my hex will not be lower than the previous bear market's low. And so I position myself in, into a place where I can be comfortable in the lows. There are some great influencers out there that will say to you, well, eHex, it dropped 99%, so there's no chance it will ever hit its all-time high. I'm not proposing that it will always hit its all-time high. You know, people say things go to zero. They actually do, didn't go to zero. That's the funny thing about it. Eve Classic had a run-up in its bull run. Eve Classic went on to make higher highs. And interestingly enough, Cardano has done 90% drop and then gone on and done a new all-time high as well. I think our community is bigger than Cardano's. And there's still value on the e-hex side of things. There is a mechanism called staking that actually earns you yield and that you can sell that yield off in the future. There's a strong community that still values each side of the coins, even though they're two separate cryptocurrencies. In my prediction, I think because Pulse Chain is going to do more Xs than Ethereum does in this bull run, I believe that it has a higher chance of doing an all-time high. That's not to say that eHex may not hit it, but I agree with some influencers that eHex did do 99%. And if we look at data of previous cryptocurrencies that go down over 90%, most often they don't go above their all-time high at the next bull run. We keep chucking the baby out with the bath water. And what I mean by that is we keep saying that Pulse Chain Hex did 99% down. It did not exist. It's a brand new cryptocurrency. Why do you keep saying that on the internet when you know it's not true? It never did an all-time high. The only all-time high it did was on this damn chart. And this damn chart shows me that it's about 4x away, maybe 3x from its all-time high.
I know that people value it. I know that there are some people that want to buy it on both sides and want to hold it and want to stake it and want it to outperform Bitcoin and Ethereum as well and may not want to sell their bags. I also know that there's a OA that has a lot of Pulse, a lot of ETH, a lot of DAI. Hmm. It's interesting that. Anyway. Let me know your comments in the comment section below. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, join the Telegram group t.me slash moneygangcoachat. I want to hear your thoughts. Until next time.